So here's mine starting. Okay. okay. So um, just kind of jumping in there. Uh, welcome everybody back to the show, uh, The Silent War with NemosNewsNetwork.com. We're joined today by a very special guest. His name is Mark Sargent. Um, I met him through a mutual friend, but more importantly, I saw his documentary, Under the Dome, They Are Hiding God. And it blew my mind. It changed my life. And I hope that you'll watch it. But I invited him on the show, and uh, we're going to kind of go through sort of his journey and how he discovered what he's found. Uh, without further ado, um, Mark, welcome to the show, and thank you for coming. Hey, and thank you very much for having me. Interesting, by the way, that you saw that particular video. Uh, it was uh, it was called They Are Hiding God. That wasn't even on my channel, which was really weird. That was done oof, at least six years ago now, I think. And what had happened was, because uh, my channel it was just kind of starting out. I had never really posted anything on YouTube before. And they, when, you, when you're just starting out on YouTube, you can only post, at least back then, like videos that were like 10 minutes in length. And I made the clues and I had these people that were coming back. It's like, wow, I enjoyed your movie. Hey, I enjoyed your movie. And then I, I was like, what movie are they talking about? So I, uh, I finally asked them, I said, so uh, you have a link to this movie? And they sent me a link and there were several people that had compiled all the clues and put them on their own channel and didn't even put Flat Earth in the title. Um, one was called They're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. Um, they were Hiding God with the Biggest Lie Ever. And then Under the Dome, full documentary. And those are getting millions of hits. And we, I mean, wow. far eclipsing what I was doing on my channel. It wasn't even on mine. And then it, that, that's kind of what sparked, you know, if you want the definition of how things go viral, there, there it goes. And part of the reason that happened was because when I initially, it's still this, the same way now, but I made my videos a Creative Commons license which basically said, yeah, you want to take it? Fine. And there are people, there are, are people out on YouTube that just scour YouTube and look for Creative Commons videos that are interesting. And that's how it came to be. So there you go. Well, that shows, I guess, the power of a name. So definitely look for Mark's channel. Um, yeah. There's a lot of other content that he's done. Yeah. And really, you know, the part that struck me, I mean, you blew apart not only NASA, and the faith that we have in their so-called science, it's really just a bunch of actors and they constantly have gaffes. I mean, Biden level gaffes. Right. Um, and you just really have to point it out for people. But also a lot of the other reasons that we sort of think of the world as a globe. And, um, you know, I think it did a great job of, of pointing out the firmament issue too, which a lot of people that discuss the I call it biblical earth because the, the first rule of flat club is you don't talk about flat club. I think right. I heard that from you or someone yeah, else. Yeah, I came up with that. But, uh, That's straight out of fight uh, club. Yeah, just for safety reasons. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a psyop. They have so much uh, counter propaganda against the, the flat part. So, you know, biblical earth, it's a little bit harder to just rapidly insult and they have to think a little bit more to get it. But basically biblical earth cosmology or flat, whatever you want to call it. Right. Um, a lot of people leave out the firmament part, I found, or they don't want to address that, or they don't want to take it to the next logical level of, you know, they are hiding God, which when you realize the shape, that sort of is the next step, right? Yeah, 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 it is. Um, the, the reason why at least half of our community, and I'm being cautious when I say that, at least half the community is uh, in, in the strong Christian camp is because once you understand the whole concept of flat earth, you know, not that it's just flat, but it's enclosed, you know, and, and it probably has walls and a floor and a ceiling. That means it was built. And if it was built by someone, well, it was created by someone. And it's like, okay, who created it? And then you can really go one of two paths. One is an older civilization that's more advanced and more powerful than ourselves or some sort of deity. And at that point you were kind of splitting hairs and the the uh yeah. any it, the in fact all the religions have a stake in this and they all just started moving toward it. it's like oh yeah this gets you one step closer to realizing that you're not an accident you're not some part a residual effect of the big bang yeah. this tiny little rock covered in smoke and water flying through this impossible universe and it's and it's absolutely accidental it's like no no not not a chance so you, you you do point out like all of the religions have a stake and, and that brings up an interesting point and anyone can look this up all of the basically all of the different uh religions or or cultures in the past all of the ancient civilizations had the same concept which was a 
sort of a snow globe earth. Yeah. And they all sort of described it very similar to the way the Bible does, which is a firmament. Yeah. Um, with the Egyptians, they, they did it a little bit more subtly. They had like their God stretched over the horizon and yeah. stars painted on their body, right? They were doing yeah. like the yoga pose, but it's still a firmament. And uh, it kind of goes to proving creationism. It may not necessarily prove one or the other God, but it does bring people closer to that conversation, I think, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can look up on Google. You could type in ancient cosmologies and click on images, and you would have seen this, this huge barrage of every culture, every. And I know people say, oh, no, the Greeks were in. Oh, the Greeks were into it, too, for a while. And then they started making up fuzzy math and it's like coming up with the whole sphere thing which didn't make any sense anyway, because you're talking about a sphere without continents. You know, you don't know. It's like, oh, it's a sphere. Do you know how the land is laid out? Nope, have no idea. Never got there. It's like, oh, okay. But, but every culture out there drew the same thing, which was basically a snow globe. And why wouldn't you? In fact, if you want to have yeah. some fun, go on YouTube and, and type in time-lapse star trails, you know, or time-lapse night sky. And when you watch that time lapse, when you see the scar, you know the, the the stars, you know arcing over the the sky above you, you you can't break out of the illusion yourself you know, because the question is, okay, are the stars moving or are we moving? Well, your eyes, your instincts say, well, the stars are moving, and then science comes out later and says, no, 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 stars are are sitting still. You're moving. It's like uh, I don't know, don't think so. Anyway, yeah. And, and that brings up sort of a separate but very overlapping and related issue of geocentricity and, uh, you know, is it mobile? Are we spinning or is it immobile? Sort of described, I guess, by multiple religions, but, uh, you know, I, I guess I'm more familiar with the biblical interpretation, but right. sort of set on the pillars and, and unmoving, right? Oh, yeah. So it, are we spinning or, or no. are these stars spinning around us? No, I mean, no, no. I mean, the sky, everything, the sky is just an illusion. Uh, I, I believe it was... Even though the firmament was a pretty good one when it came to the Bible, I think it was Joshua. I think that was the story that really got me, where Joshua was trying to need more time to slay enemies that were out in the battlefield. And so he asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky oh, for yeah. an extra, extra day. And you're thinking to yourself, <laughs> oh, that seems like a simple request, right? It does if it's if it's if it's an if you know a snow globe, a flat world, an enclosed world then you know, all you do is hit pause. But if you try to do that in a solar system model, you are, oh, the, the amount of physics you have to change to, to do that. I mean, you, you, know, you have to change everything from gravity that's, that science defines it as to all the forces of a planet going around a sun and then the sun moving sideways through the galaxy and so on and so on. So no, no, nothing, we're not moving at all. We, we've never had any indication. So there's things moving above us, sure. But are we moving? No, no. Which, you know, the science, we briefly touched on that, some of the, the science, so-called science, uh, which does not really follow the scientific method. It's more like the dogmatic scientism where they, they tell us what to believe and we have to accept it because yeah. of science, which is not exactly how it works. It's, you know, it's based on fallibility and other people being able to test it for themselves in home or somewhere. There was a And, uh, you know, the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. Was well, I was just going to add that there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of false science built in order to sort of counter this truth. Yeah, seems like a lot of different things are trying to either debunk the Bible or or reinforce the globe theory or or whatever. It seems like there re really is an information war at least over the last couple of hundred years. Yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, science, well, science is an institution like any, anyone else, any other group, and they want to protect their institution. And there was this wonderful quote uh, by George Orwell that he wrote back in 1946, and you know, the, the guy that wrote 1984. And he, he said, he, remember, he was not a flat earther when he wrote this. He said, most people have asked to prove that the earth is round would not even bother pr to produce the rather weak arguments I've outlined above. They would start off by saying that well, everyone knows the earth to be round and if pressed further would become angry. In a way, Shaw is right. This is a credulous age and the burden of knowledge, which we now have to carry is partially responsible. And what he was basically saying is, is that people believe whatever the people in the white lab coats say, because, well, they're smarter than you. So whatever they say is, is, is that's got to be the truth. Well, it was interesting because he wrote that in 1946. 
how did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946? NASA wasn't even founded until 12 years later. It wasn't even founded until 12 years later. So how did everybody know if there was no space program? Then you start thinking about it. It's like, oh, right. They didn't know. They were told. And that's a big difference. You, know, you, can, you can throw out whatever yeah. you want in textbooks. And for the most part, people believe it's like, well, these people have degrees. And it's, they're smarter than us. And, you know, the, the two examples I like throwing out there, um, one would be the core of the earth, which you've heard about, obviously, which is, you know, we should, we, every kid, every kid has seen that cross section with the perfect thousand mile deep bands, you know, red and orange and yellow and the white center. And you go, wow, how do you know this? You know, it's like, it's awfully convenient that it's laid out like that. And then you realize that the deepest hole ever drilled wasn't even half that. It wasn't a thousand miles. It wasn't even a hundred. It wasn't even 10. It was seven miles and, or I think it was eight miles, eight miles. And it doesn't really matter. The Russians and the Germans tried to punch through that for the longest time and could not do it. So if you, if your deepest hole isn't even 10 miles, how are you showing us perfect, uh, you know, the, the geology strata going all the way down to 4,000 miles? Well, you can't. Um, the other one, which is, uh, the, you know, I try to point out, look, science is wrong all the time. The difference between science and other institutions is, well, other institutions do this as well, is they don't apologize for being wrong, uh, which, you know, I, I like bringing up the coelacanth fish. <laughs> the, um, uh, the coelacanth fish with a lot of extra fins, uh, ugly fish, and been extinct for at least 70 million years. And every scientist in the world, every single one of them would have bet the freaking farm that this thing was extinct. Look, here's the fossil of it. It's got to be extinct. And then they caught, the British Navy caught one off of um, South Africa in 1940. And then another one off of Madagascar and Mozambique. And pretty soon they figured, it's, wow, they're swimming all around Africa. Well, what happened? How did you get this absolutely completely, yeah. completely wrong? And they sort of have to make up terms. Oh, it's a living fossil. It's not really evolving, but it's been hanging around. And so then I, I'll come back with them. You know, I try to put a little fun into it. And I say, so the Loch Ness Monster, you know, there, there's a dinos there's dinosaurs swimming around in, in various deep water lakes, uh, some, some in England. Loch Ness Monster is not real. It's like, no, no, that's ridiculous. I go, really? Why? And they go, because it's been extinct for at least 100 million years. I go, you mean like that fish over there, that fish you were wrong about. So that fish, you're absolutely wrong, but the Loch Ness Monster, oh, no, no, you can, you can bet bet your your money on that and then they kind of look at me and be like yeah, yeah. Wow. Science, science is only right until the day that it's not and i love bringing up oh. sorry uh, cryptozoology every once in a while which is um animals that used to be myths but now aren't meaning science just laughed and laughed at the yeah. giant giant panda <laughs> that's not real and then it was the giant anaconda wasn't real and then it was um the giant squid which we still have never found a full grown giant squid because you can't catch them. They're way too deep and way too fast and way too deadly. Um, we will, our best subs could never get them. So, we, but they're real because we found remnants of them in their only living predator, the sperm whale. And it goes on and on and on. Science just, they, they make their statement, they put their stamp on it. And the one thing I hate about science is when they're wrong, they will be like, well, okay, we're gonna reclassify this. And now it's under the umbrella of science. And you're not going to apologize for that? <laughs> nope, we are not. We are, we're, they you might know. as well just say it's our best guess. The, sorry, the, the follow-up to that is, so instead of the core of the earth showing us this cross-section, why don't you just put a big question mark on the inside of it? And they won't do that. The science is, you know, they, instead of saying, instead of putting the disclaimer in there, which is on Wikipedia actually, saying we don't really know what's down there. They put, it's like, this is what we think it's down there. But then they leave out the think part. They just say, oh, this is what's down there. And everyone believes it because they're the men in the white lab coats. So anyway, sorry, I rambled. So, you know, my, my, my audience are not new by any means to the concept of fake news and revisionism and how they've changed history. And at least in the more recent sense, I often point out to people that, you know, that has been going on throughout history uh, right. a lot. 
<laughs> they've rewritten pretty much everything. You mentioned cryptozoology as well. I mean, I've really looked into a lot of this, especially like the Nephilim and the giants and the elongated skulls that they found at all of these different like blood sacrifice ritual sites throughout the world. Sure. Always kind of using the same symbolism and, and ritual stuff. It, it's it's really eerie, um, and I, I think that it harkens back to like Genesis six and and fallen angels mating with human women. But other people think that that's from ancient aliens impregnating you know human women or genetically manipulating them that's sort of the right. ancient aliens version of history because this stuff is sort of coming out like the giant skeletons are so common yeah. uh the the elongated skulls have been dna tested now uh so you know this this cryptozoology thing it freaks people out like but don't don't necessarily write off things like the Loch Ness monster because a lot of this stuff did exist Oh, because yeah. they were playing with genetics in the Old Testament days. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm a. We do this with history. It's not just you know everyone knows history is written by the winners, which is very very true. Um, the the slightly darker version is Napoleon's version, where he said history is just lies that are agreed upon. If you have a narrative and you don't want that narrative, it, it happens all the time all the time in just about every institution you can think of you you maximize the positives you minimize the negatives or get rid of them entirely and governments are notorious for doing this uh i mean come on there's there's corruption and lies and conspiracies in just about every aspect of our lives this is a world of deception um it's just what people are comfortable with looking at you know everyone's got their own little wheelhouse some are bigger than others uh, you know, I could spend an entire day talking about conspiracies and I don't know, uh, business and politics and sports and entertainment and yeah, even science and journalism, you know, all, all day long, you know, nobody wants to look bad in, in the public eye if you can help it. And if that means you're going to lie or cover up or delete things to, to keep your narrative going. Yeah, sure. That, that's what they're going to do. And this was the, the biggest of them all. You, people, people often ask, like, well, why would they do this? Why, why keep it a secret? And I go, because of when they found out about it, meaning we didn't even have the tech to figure this out. We didn't, as a civilization, didn't have the tech to figure it out. And of course, there could have been old maps and ancient stories and all that, but you don't have the tech to figure it out till almost 1960. And then when you figure it out, do you tell people? And I've asked journalists this. I've said, you know, would you break this story? Would you actually tell the public if you already had, if the, if the cement of civilization had already hardened? No, you wouldn't because you would be afraid of the backlash behind it, uh, academically, economically, religious um, aspects of it. You know, again, giving the, the five major religious houses of the world, you know, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, um, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, you're giving them all leverage against science that's been beating them over the head with textbooks for the last five centuries. That's not going to go well. And so the best option is you find out in 1960, it's like, yeah, let's just keep this thing hidden until we can figure out how to use it to our advantage, which is apparently it, started in 2015. So go ahead. You know, I, I, I found I, I want to talk about sort of, I want to talk about globe versus flat, obviously, but I also want to discuss some of those other uh, sciences that were built sort of parallel like evolution and carbon dating and things right. that uh, also have been debunked and right. also are sort of used to to beat religions over the head with right yeah um same same concept it's like they're building a whole school of sciences in order to disprove god or something they sort they of are. the same hiding god theme yeah when when i made the the clue um they're hiding god it was mostly because actually believe it or not of of um, pressure from Christian listeners that had listened to the first few clues. And I was getting a slew of emails saying, you're dancing around the religious issue. You really should address this. People wanted to address it. It's like, you know what? You're right. So, uh, you know, I did the clue, they're hiding God. And yes, I mean, from a science standpoint, there is no blending. Science and religion have always been at odds, extreme odds. You know, you've got one side science that says, Oh, there's absolutely no deliberate purpose to this world at all, or even the universe. You know, it is an accident, even though that, that age old question, you know, it's like, oh, there was this big bang. Well, what, what happened before the big bang? Uh, it was a really, really big bang. It's like, what, what create, what started it? Uh, you know, let's talk about the big bang. It's like, you won't, you know, the, the, it's like it started from somewhere, but they said, well, it was spontaneous. And that we are, again, just this mathematically statistically imp almost impossible result of that 
And uh, I mean, you've heard the stories yeah. over, over the years, but yeah, the well, same thing. Same you know, thing. You, go ahead. Brief, brief injection. When you mentioned the Big Bang, um, the underlying theory that that was based on, the whole thing started as a joke, but there was seances involved, and and it goes back to some of the secret society occult stuff. And I want to mention that there is a huge overlap between these false sciences that are being used to try to bash religions over the head, as you say, for 500 years right. and the occult secret societies, um, massive overlap. I think that there's something there. Oh yeah. Well, there's again, remember at the high levels of secret societies, that's where the real money is. That's where the real power is. Uh, the first rule of power, which has never changed over the centuries and millennia is stay hidden. And by that you can't, in fact, Napoleon, again, very quotable man, uh, he, he said that you, they can't overthrow you if they don't know who you are. It's the curse of being the puppet masters. You can't be the puppet masters and be the, the puppet on stage at the same time. Uh, kings can be overthrown. Presidents can be overthrown. Dictators can be overthrown. All these people can be overthrown because the general public knows their name. You want, what you want to do is you want to be able to control those people but stay about as anonymous as possible, which is why I love um, bringing up, you know, when, when, if you asked anybody in the truth community, uh, who, who's the, you know, the top 20 most powerful group secret societies in the world, right? Ranked by order of importance, you will never come to a consensus ever, ever, ever. And that's deliberate. I mean, you could bring up all sorts of names, you know, just general Illuminati or the Rothschilds or the Bilderbergs or the CFR or the trilateral, or the Masonics, the Masons, the Jewish Cabal, and just on and on and on and on. But you're never going to find the ranking because, and that's deliberate because you, you, the whole point of that is to not let out who is who's actually pulling the the, the high level strings. But yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, those groups, it's almost like they they once they knew what science could be as an institution, they gave everything. You know, they put everything into it, and it would be and it. it evolved for lack of a better term into something that made itself stronger over the years so as technology got better and it's really amplified over the last hundred years once technology got better and better and better people were leaning more on technology and not you know the mystery of things kind of went away which is hypocritical for me it's like you know everyone's got like owns a microwave yeah. oven right 99 percent of people can't even tell you how it works Right? They've kind of got a general sure. semblance of how their smartphones work, kind of, but no, you know, 99% of people couldn't, couldn't even begin to, to delve into the engineering schematics of it and so on and so on. But we, we started creating things that even 100 years ago would be considered mystical, you know, wizardry. And so people fell away from, uh, you know, a lot of the um, leaning into uh, leaning less into spiritual and more on the tech side and so you know here we are now more people have smartphones than have running water and you know between yeah. high between high speed wow. internet and social media now you can push out a narrative to most of the people in the world in a in within minutes and i find that fascinating but anyway you know, I, I want to briefly mention that the white lab coats of science today that we put so much faith in are not too different from like the priestly robes of like the ancient druids sacrificing babies on altars. Yeah. And the same sort of dogmatic faith is given to them. Yeah. And, and, you know, I often joke with people when they're, when they're, you know, asking me why I don't trust modern science or modern doctors uh, with my health. I mean, not blindly, at least, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll say, what do you call the guy who finished last in med school? doctor <laughs> even though he might have slept through half of his classes or, or partied the whole time he barely right. scraped through you still call him doctor so there's a, a massive competency and morality and ethical difference between some of these uh professionals in the medical field for example and it, it's the same way i i think the whole system is basically set up to filter the most unethical people to the highest levels um as efficiently as it can mm -hmm. and the free market sort of works against that but everywhere that there's control and hierarchy and dominance, you see massive corruption. Yeah. I mean, the well, medical profession as a whole basically just skipped um, informed consent and started passing out poison experimental vaccines to yeah. the world. Yeah. So, you know, the, the white robes are not as, uh, I, I hope, as reliable and trustworthy to people as they used to be. Yeah, the, um, the, the medical community, uh, not even just the medical, but science in general, 
uh, they're, they're corruptible like anybody else. You know, women get a pass on this because men, you know, have elevated themselves to a certain level of power and they are so easily corrupted. Uh, so when people say, oh, you know, you, you can't yeah. have conspiracies in, in science, I go, really? I mean, I, again, I could spend an entire day just on, on the, all the scientists that cut corners just to get a product to market so that the price of the stock would go, you know, would stay right. relatively same or, or go up everything from, you know, old school stuff like um, lead paint or lead gasoline or DDT, you know, the, the mosquito, because we had apparently a huge mosquito problem in the United States. It's like, hey, let's just gas everything with mosquito re re repellent and not even knowing what it would do to the ecosystem. Um, then all the variations of DDT, um, it, uh, asbestos, which I love because it's a it's a great product unless you work in the factory that manufactures it <laughs> and then you're doomed unless you have huge respiratory you know respiratory systems that are in place sure um and then of course all the the scientists that took the money and said that cigarettes were just fine for you I mean I'm old enough to remember I'm not that old yeah uh, to remember the commercials um four out of five doctors recommend fill in the blank of this cigarette here I mean the cigarette commercials used to be on the Flintstones, the, the cartoon show. Uh, going, it, just, it was amazing the amount. And, and sorry, one more yeah. thing I got to put in there, which is, well, yeah, but we, we, we smartened up and we, we stopped cigarettes from being promoted on, on television and radio and stuff like that. I go, no, no, we didn't. Um, it had nothing to do with the class action suits, the amount of people that were getting cancer. It was the health, health insurance companies that were losing so much money from people going into surgery with lung cancer, the health insurance company is like, look, uh, we can't keep paying for this. So it was big money insurance versus big tobacco. And that's that's how it worked. That's how it played out. And eventually they won. And even then the the win was limited. You know, we still, which is funny, you know, they, they get this huge, massive lawsuit campaign against the scientists. And even though they won, cigarettes are still sold all they got you know they just banned it on a few media services and put a big warning sticker on the side of it sure. and then later they figured out that one in five people at least in the united states will smoke no matter what which in hindsight the the, the cigarette companies would have been easy enough just to settle the lawsuit immediately and then you know take the money anyway sorry I didn't sure know, didn't know um I going yeah I, I do want to i want to i'm sorry what i didn't know where i was going there for a second <laughs> No, you're good. We I have a little bit of a delay with my satellite too, so I, you know okay. that's worth mentioning. But I I want to do sort of a um, a mention here. I've I've been building a website called the Serapium, which I kind of got the name from the Library of Alexandria. It was one of the the libraries there oh, cool. that was burned, full of knowledge, and uh, it's it's basically an attempt to document and archive the hidden history of mankind. And part of that, you know, is is this science that's been suppressed. Uh, you know, I call it like forbidden science and it has various branches stuff they don't allow us to talk about or stuff that they cover up um and then you know like germ theory versus terrain theory and then since we're talking about the medical profession specifically that's one of those things that the medical profession doesn't want us to talk about and the vaccine truth stuff they don't want us to talk about that no. but um you know we, we talk about some of that forbidden science stuff but we also talk about this deep i call it deep state science some people call it scientism or or whatever, but this stuff that they're just making up and they're spending massive amounts of money and hundreds of years now, uh, usually the secret society is pulling the strings, yeah. building this lie for a reason. What is their agenda? And you know, I, I think, I don't know what your theory, I'd love to hear it on this, is that uh, they're basically trying to bring back the fallen angels as aliens. I mean, even governments are now pushing, hey, yeah, UFOs are here, they're declassifying thousands of documents saying that there's, you know, UFOs everywhere and they're uh, accompanied by unexplained pregnancies and weird stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, it's no longer a big secret. Uh, I think that they're, they're trying to bring them back with a, a better PR campaign in a, in a globular world model with a, you know, infinite universe of who knows what's out there. Right. Whereas in the ancient world, these things were recognized. Yeah. You, yeah. It's interesting. You would bring it up like that, you know, that we're, we're actually, Imagine if you could um, summon beings, interdimensional beings, but have a marketing team behind them to make it seem, you know, that they were on our side. Uh, but you get you get a real point there, which is there are 
we've now come to a point in history for the first time ever, especially through media, that it doesn't matter if you're eight years old or you're 80 years old, you have some sort of alien movie or television show or book or all three that are, <clears throat> excuse me, that are tied to, uh, there's a reference point there going, going back to, uh, you know, some sort of alien interaction with, uh, with our civilization. Sure. And it's, I mean, going all the way back to, I mean, the early stuff, like you know, the, the first, the day the earth stood still to war of the world. So, you know, it goes on and on. I mean, you know, ET and yeah. star Wars, Stargate, Star Trek, all, all the space stuff. So, yeah. so where people, if you had a giant golden spaceship land in the middle of Paris, you know, tomorrow, there would be an interesting group. There'd be two groups of people that would show up. One would be all the, the sciencey, nerdy, or non-affiliated people to be like, oh, wow, they do look like the people from Avatar. You know, that group of people. Or you'd get the other side, which would treat it as some sort of religious event and say, oh, wow, we've got to definitely start building a church for the blue people and, and, and do that. But, but yeah, that you're, you're right in that it could happen. And it, I don't think you'd get that many people running through the streets screaming. Well, the different from say the whole Roswell thing in the late forties, Roswell, it yeah. wasn't the right time. You know, we didn't even have decent sci-fi references and even television wasn't much of a thing back then. You had radio and you had newspapers and things moved pretty slow, but even the newspapers were freaking out. It's like a flying saucer, you know, the, the, the people yeah. weren't, people weren't ready nowadays. Oh yeah. I mean, in fact, you'd have Gen Zers out there, different Gen Zers, just, just no emotion on their face at all. Just holding up their cell phone. <laughs> just, just filming it well, it's, it's yeah i know what you mean they, it, so, it, it's interesting that you bring up roswell um yeah. i want to i want to go back to that and and talk about that in a minute too but sure. i do want to mention i hope that there's a third group that shows up and starts waving the book of enoch around basically mm. and starts explaining what these things really are that would be nice wouldn't it <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the book of enoch for those who, who don't know um a non-canonized book of the bible there was so so much history we are not taught in that the bible isn't just a collection of everything they was they were sent the, there was a lot of books in fact most of them they weren't even didn't even make it into the bible you know it was like submissions and the, but the most one of the most popular was the book of enoch um which eh, to be fair it is a little wild in compared to you know the other stuff that's in the bible and, and if you're not a sci-fi person if you're not into tech it kind of reads like stereo instructions in some places because it's it's like a technical manual. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's what's happening in heaven from yeah. a technical from a technical standpoint. You know, it yeah. breaks down the. There's the a lot of science in there. Yeah, there's there's modular aspects of heaven. It's not this ethereal thing with trumpets and, and choirs. No, no, no. It's mechanical in nature, and we're gonna go through it. And you know, that's that's what Enoch really was about. Um, but but yeah, if. If, if somebody shows up, it's, I, and I don't, I don't want to make light of this when I say it, but whoever, whoever's, whoever's the first group that shows up usually will have the most influence, what, whatever that group is, you know, that my, my favorite, in fact, if you want to talk about Roswell uh, in a, a second, go ahead. But my favorite uh, uh, UFO thing of all time uh, wasn't Roswell. It was the 1561 Nuremberg event, which I just adored because there were three factions that showed up. Uh, and there seemed to be some sort of hierarchy and, you know, no, there wasn't anyone with photographs, but they were there for so long that they sketched out the entire thing in, in Germany. It was a cloudless day and these three factions were just hammering on each other uh, over, over Germany. It's just fantastic. So anyway. So um, to, to go back to Roswell, and I'm glad that you kind of mentioned that because that's kind of the birth of this alien explosion in terms of sightings and abductions and stories and reports and, right. you know, secret UFO research facilities like Area 51, which which was actually built after a seance sex ritual was performed there, hmm. where they supposedly summoned a demon named Lamb, which looked just like a gray alien. But there's a lot of little like connections here with the occult stuff too and, and what they write about. Yeah. But I think that like when when you when you go back to the book of Enoch in in relation to Roswell, I mean they were roughly about the same time because that's when the caves of Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Yeah. And the book of Enoch here is like one of the most popular, probably the most popular book among those Dead Sea Scrolls found among the ancient Essenes Christians. Right. I mean, this was part of the history. It was part of the 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 scriptures, if not like the modern 
official church's canon, although I think that they actually removed it at one point. It's still in the Ethiopian canon, right. in the, you're, like you're, the oldest Christian church. You are correct. It was in the Ethiopian, yeah. But, um, you know, it, when you combine the detail of the book of Enoch with the overall uh, timeline and details of the book of Genesis, it reads like one of the best thriller Lord of the Rings action books ever. Yeah. It's actually really exciting. Now, there's a lot of science and stuff and, and like descriptions of the physical world. It's definitely a win book. Like if you're a flat earther or a biblical earther, oh, yeah. a lot of book of Enoch goes with you there. Yeah. But, but specifically like the first thing in the book of Enoch was like a prophecy it was meant to be found during the last generation, uh, when these things are coming back yeah. and that seems to really parallel with me. I can't shake it with what's going on with this alien agenda shows like ancient aliens, admitting giants were real, admitting all of this stuff from the Bible was real, but trying to pin it on aliens. Like they were our creators, like the panspermia theory. And they're just sort of rewriting and twisting a little bit here, a little bit there. And I've got specific examples I can even point to where they will lie by omitting a scripture that they just used as evidence for their lie. Like yeah. they'll leave out the one phrase that proves their entire thesis about that phrase wrong. Like they tried to prove, uh, for example, that Moses was born of aliens hmm. because of a specific passage, I think, from the book of Jasher. But then they left out the next passage that confirmed he was not. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So yeah. they're trying to really hard to paint this alien agenda. And that's where I want to prep people. I, I think my biggest thing when I talk about flat earth with skeptics is, you know, why does it matter? Why do you care so much about flat earth? Right. And that's where I get back to this stuff. There's a war. It, they're rewriting our history. They're enslaving us. Like they're taxing us to death. Uh, every so often they like every so often they massacre us, but basically that it matters because the truth leads right back to god's existence yes absolutely absolutely it does uh it, there's and and that go, kind of goes into why the um the the flat earth community is so unified and so much more positive than other groups i mean come on they're, they're, we don't when we do full-blown conferences, you know, international conferences, they are really an optimistic bunch of, a bunch of people from, from all walks of life. And what caught my eye was the amount of women and families that were, they were in these groups, you know, people who were comfortable enough to bring their families to the flat earth conferences. And mostly it's because, you know, cause I asked, I asked the, the women involved, it's like, so why are you drawn to this? And they said, well, because flat earth has a positive message. It's a message of hope. All other conspiracies, you know, it's, it's dark and sinister and people talk like bad men. And, you know, they, they talk about overthrowing the government and stuff <laughs> like that. And it, and, but with flat earth, it's, it's one of the few conspiracies that wasn't made by man. Meaning every other conspiracy, you know, we'd rattle off a whole slew of them. They're, you know, they're, they're, they started with us and they were hidden, you know, buried in the desert somewhere and you don't have to think about them again. Whereas the, the whole flat earth and closed world thing is so big that you, we have nothing to do with it whatsoever. But regardless, it takes the idea of an empty soulless universe and condenses it down to a studio apartment that was built by a being that built it for you very deliberately and for a very specific purpose. And that gives people hope. You know, I was worried initially in 2015 that there'd be a, a, a small percentage of people that would lose it. They'd just crack, you know, cause the, 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 the universe would shrink so fast on them that they'd be, they, they, they wouldn't be able to take it. But that wasn't true. Once it got down to the studio apartment size, it's like, yeah, by the way, you're living in a very, very big um, building. that's very comfortable and it was made for you. It was reassuring for them. And again, the, the, in fact, it was, I was, I was surprised was there were flat earth Christian conferences that I wasn't even invited to because I wasn't Christian enough, <laughs> which I thought was amazing. I was like, really? It's like wow. I was raised evangelical and church wasn't just a Sunday thing, but whatever. Uh, but they, but, but, but they, I heard in these conferences, you know, I watched some of the, the, the panels and they said, they've never seen a single topic that brought people back to the church as much as this one did, uh, because yeah. it, it, people that, that, I mean, heck, I, I was, I was one of them, you know, I, I got into, uh, software and the tech side of things, became a video game producer and so on and so on. And then taught proprietary software for 20 years. And then when cool. I got into this. It was like, oh yeah, right. 
the whole meaning the, the whole meaning of life thing that that i've been distracted from for decades yeah uh so yeah it's the same here from and, and it's interesting that you say that because rob skiba said the same thing i think pretty often is that this this particular tree bore the best fruit in terms of bringing people back to god yeah uh, to Christ, to Yeshua is, is, you know, the flatter thing, because once they work through the logical exercise, like we said early on, it, you know, you have to accept there's a creator yeah. where you go from there. It, that's on you and your research. Yeah. You know, I've got some ideas. I think it goes back to you know, the old Testament, ancient Hebrew God, yeah. but, you know, bringing up Rob Skiba, how, how familiar are, familiar are you with his, uh, seed war content? Um, uh, not that much. I mean, Rob and I, you know, obviously, you know, the story, you know, we got together back in, in 2015 and he was one of the first people to put me on his podcast because he was trying to work this thing out in his head. And then he used me as a disclaimer in case something went wrong with flat earth in case all of a sudden something <laughs> blew it out of the water. I was the disclaimer, which was whatever it was uh, March or something. I can't remember the exact day, but it was in 2015, the day that Mark Sargent ruined my life. But that wasn't done just to be funny. But once he got the laughs in the in the conferences, he always used that slide. Always used that slide. Oh yeah. It was like, man, you just I'm I'm you're I'm just the insurance in case something goes like, well, it was Mark's idea. <laughs> in case yeah, in case something yeah, just that's just funny blew out of the water. But no, I I love Rob. But no, no, the the thing you're talking, I I he made so much content, I couldn't watch it all. So like real brief, like, I guess, testimonial background, whatever um, I, I was, you know, raised in the public school system, but I was super anti-theist. I mean, I wasn't simply an atheist. I blamed religion for a lot of the world's problems and I wanted to solve the problem. So I learned how to debate religion from a really like high level. I've got all my Christopher Hitchens and, and uh, Richard Dawkins books in the background on my bookshelf. I'm, it's not shown right now, but you know, I still have those books, but then when I saw Rob Skiba's, uh, it was like the top 10 series, I think, about uh, debunking the reasons that we think it's a globe. He, he goes into detail. And then I saw your documentary, with the one that was put together under the dome there, Hiding God. Yeah. And, um, you know, those two just clicked for me. At the same time, I was researching what the deep state writes about, what they believe, what they put in their own, you know, Freemason writings, for example. And, you know, I think that he was on to something with the seed war. I think that they actually... Either they believe that they are the descendants of the Nephilim of Genesis six, yeah. uh, that you know that came from these fallen angels slash alien things, sure. or that they uh, um, that they you know e either they worship them or they descended from them. Sure. It's one or the other. In the Freemason teachings, like they write a lot about Nimrod, for example. Right. You know, he's basically the founder of Freemasonry. Right. Way back, Tower of Babel guy. You know, in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, also known as Gilgamesh, uh, a bunch of different names that he had. So this this guy was pretty big in history, and he was you know a self proclaimed two thirds god giant, according to the Epic of Gilgamesh, you know which he wrote, uh, which is like ancient Sumeria. That's where they start to talk about the ancient alien stuff. But right. you know my point is that over the course of history, the things that we consider mythology now, the, the titans of Greek mythology, the clash of the titans, the gods like. Zeus and Hades and all of those, they were all real. Um, you know, a lot of the creatures that we took for granted, like you mentioned earlier, like cryptozoology, we laughed at. Yeah. We realize now that they were real. A lot of that is explained by the genetic manipulation in the days of Noah. Sure. Because after the fallen angels landed uh, in Genesis 6 in the days of Jared, they started making human angel babies. And those became massive titans that had such a caloric intake level that kind of like the liger today, their growth inhibitor gene switched off and they got hungry. They were eating each other, literally. Yeah. Um, that's where you get all the like ancient art and, and stories of uh, Saturn or, or Kronos eating his own children and stuff. That stuff happened and it's all covered in the book of Enoch in detail. But, yeah. um, you know, these things are real and, and we still find their skeletons all over the place and that sort of I, I call it the seed of the serpent, that seed line. That's part of the seed war. Even today, the secret societies went underground after, after Yeshua, uh, but they're still here calling the shots, running the show. And, and they're still worshiping these things. Even though that sounds wild, you know, from, from the layman that's just looking from the outside in, 
you know, even even your most uh, hardened person, you know, that are that's grounded and you know, say, oh, you know, I know what's 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 happening and what's not with science. It's like, come on, our military bases. Once we started getting into genetic technology, you know full well right now somewhere in the United States in some base we are you know creating our own hybrids. For, and we have been for years and years and years, you know, as soon as we could do it, because that's what we do. Uh, you know, science, one yeah. of the, the, the pains that science brings us is that they do things because they can, not because they should. You know, they, do, yeah. they don't question the morality. It's an old, old argument. It's like, well, you know, let the engineers and those guys, you know, the people figure out what to do with it. It's like, it's like so, but you, you don't question the why. It's like, can we do this? Can we blend genetics? Can we, you know, explore... Yeah you know, the, or even going into the stuff like CERN, you know, can we open up a wormhole into another dimension? It's like, well, Stephen King did that in the yeah. book called The Mist. Uh, that yeah. didn't go yeah. well. So, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, you're, you're right. And it, it's even worse than that. Like magazines openly talk about glow-in-the-dark pigs and, and rats growing human ears and cows oh, yeah. growing spider milk and yeah. all sorts of things. Like it's it's getting to be where it's sort of, cool now or hip to basically play Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde in your own garage with CRISPR right. technology. Right. People are biohacking, they call it. Yeah. And we're creating a whole new generation, not to, not to mention the mRNA stuff, which, you know, mark of the beast, I think, but, um, you know, it removes God's name from your DNA, which is there numerically, yeah. which is kind of fascinating anyway. Anyone that but, thinks um, that's, anyone you that know, thinks all of that's... these different changes. Go ahead just all that was done all of these different genetic changes basically create mutations mutants things that god didn't ex intend to create yeah and that inevitably ends up with problems yeah oh there are i i believe that you know the when this place was built there were certain checks and balances put in place uh and now most of it we had to deal with fiction but anyone that anyone that thinks that that doing genetic ma manipulations or messing with biology is cool watch the 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 first version the first movie version of the andromeda strain you know and tell me tell me how that's cool in any way shape or form you know there's been there are again there are places where things are being done but they have fail safes involved when you when your fail safe is a uh, is is high explosives you know in case something goes wrong yeah you probably shouldn't be doing it in the first place but that's just me yeah, yeah. well you know, you mentioned movies, for example, um, basically all the movies now are superhero movies like Avengers, right. X-Men, uh, Eternals. They're all basically super power, super strong, oh, yeah. super beautiful, super muscles, no effort required, super powers. And basically that same old message, ye shall be as gods. And that's kind of the, you know, the selling point here is that people can unlock superpowers or become super beautiful or attractive or whatever, live longer, live forever. And which, which is great. If you do it with supplements, you do it right. You live a healthy lifestyle. It's not good. If you do it through hacking your biology and removing God's blueprint from, you know, your design, so to speak. Yeah. If that ever happens, by the way, I, I firmly predict that there would be, I, I think that's one of those things that's not allowed in, in our civilization, meaning to create actual superheroes, mostly because of the whole God problem which is there's been all sorts of hoaxes for just about everything you can think of. People have tried to hoax everything. No one has hoaxed an actual superhero, which I find fascinating considering what you are in now. And nor yeah. is it ever, we nor we even heard a rumor. I mean, there's all sorts of stories about, you know, aliens and monsters and stuff like that. But you've never heard of a story where, you know, a guy showed up in a cape and, and turned over a couple cars or did something either bad or good. By the way, that's also the, uh, the hypocrisy of it, which is the superhero stuff is like, they're always good, right? Most of them are good. And, and yet it's like, come on, you know, power corrupts. If power absolutely corrupts, you know, absolutely, yeah. you know, then the first superheroes and, and different comic book artists have touched on this would probably be super villains because who's going to stop them, right? It's, it's the whole chicken yeah. and the egg thing. It's like, well, you know, the Superman shows up first and then the anti-Superman shows up second. It's like, yeah, but what if it's the other way around? Then what happens? Then what do you do? is law enforcement can't touch them. And if they're super powerful, the military, and all of a sudden they, you know, they make themselves dictator or worse, you know, some sort of tyrant that sits, sits on a mountain. But anyway, sorry. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we it, going back to like historical precedent here for like guidance, um, 
during the days of like Jared, like I said, angels and humans were making giants. Now, now those right. things were super powerful, but we were still able to kill them eventually. Yes. Um, you know, like later after the flood and stuff, they were still around and, and it talks about the tribes fighting them and stuff. And they were like grasshoppers in their eyes, according to the spies, right? Yeah. So they were still able to kill the sons of Anak and all those other big giants. Later, Goliath was kind of like a baby giant. Right. Those I would consider superpowers. I'm kind of worried that they're trying to bring those back. There's like some evidence that Hillary's trying to, Hillary Clinton is trying to uh, like request the, the records and, and body of Gilgamesh, uh, which was found like Nimrod. And if they start bringing those back with genetic tampering, that's kind of scary. Um, and, and there's also like mixing different species together, like yeah. where they, uh, you know, start trying to you know the frankenfish is one example uh the gmo salmon which is like wreaking havoc now i think in the oceans sure. uh yeah mosquitoes that spread vaccines uh you know flying mosquito uh, vaccines basically uh bill gates is releasing by the millions in florida by the way in california so these are the types of things that caused i think the flood because god was trying to wipe out all that genetic corruption right oh yeah yeah and you would have to have resets every once in a while Absolutely. I mean, considering, you know, what has been done, no question. Uh, one of the, the genetic manipulations I I'd thought of on my own, you know, I was thinking of doomsday devices was if you created a, um, a life form that thrived on some sort of predatory life form that thrived on nitrogen, for example, because most of what we breathe is 80% nitrogen. It's not oxygen. And, and, that to to my knowledge, there there has not been a life form like that. If you created one of those, I'm not giving anyone that's listening an idea or anything. But if you like a nitrogen based mosquito or a or a yeah. wasp, it's like oh that would be that would be really really horrible. Or why haven't they um you know you could do what if you did that with humans? What could happen there anyway? Sorry, I'm just kind of daydreaming at this point. Well, you know the the concept of superhuman genetics i don't think is going to go away they're going to keep trying until they get it there oh, and yeah. um it's the same it's the same drive that was there in the pre-flood world trying to compete with these giants these supposed gods like little g uh, of, of mythology now um right. which have you ever heard of humorism no it's like a school of thought it's like it's frowned upon by by historians because they don't want to accept this but it's a school of thought that's close but not completely right and it basically goes that uh, all of these ancient mythology heroes and gods hercules zeus all that stuff they were real they were flesh and blood yeah. but they were mortal and they just did some cool stuff and that was recorded in history hmm. now that leaves completely the whole like ain't fallen angel genetics out of the equation it leaves the giantism out of the equation some of these things were 30 feet tall right. according to records from the library of congress and, and and tons of other records so you know we have a massive amount of evidence that these massive creatures were there yeah. so uh you know they they were pretty big and 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 powerful and uh then later on in the days of noah by then average humanity were were genetically tampering uh, i think in the book of enoch and jasher it says that they were sinning against the birds and the beasts and mixing them together essentially right um genetic tampering just like we do today with crispr mixing different species right and that could have unleashed monsters like who knows what i mean oh yeah if you can turn the if you can turn the growth inhibitor gene off for cats by mixing a like a, a tiger and a lion and you get something that can fight a tank uh or kill 20 lions because it's so big and powerful and hungry sure then you're looking at something very dangerous if that were to get out with something like a spider that can breed by the millions oh yeah don't get me started with spiders that would be <laughs> a spider i mean yeah genetic giant spiders, spiders yeah. into the world yeah yeah that would just be turn horrible. off the growth inhibitor gene and we're all on the menu yeah yeah mostly that the thing that always worried me about spiders was the um uh the webbing issue because people forget the tensile strength of, of webbing if, if you scale that up. It's like to say, having a spider running down, that's one thing. It's the web that would just be horrible. I mean, you're talking about basically steel cable webbing that would, yeah, you could wrap. Yeah. yeah it'd be bad. Yeah. Wouldn't be good. Yeah. Su super glue cables of steel, basically. Yeah, um, basically. Don't touch yeah. that. Yeah, you're not getting out of that. You know, so, so let, let's 
I, take a few minutes to just tear apart NASA, if you don't mind, because your, oh, yeah, your yeah, yeah. video content is amazing. And that's one of the biggest things that people always go back to. They, they Even if they're conspiracy minded, even if they're in my audience, even if they have been down most of the rabbit holes and they right. know that they can't trust authority anywhere else, right. like they don't trust Fauci for their vaccines. They don't trust the government for their security and freedom. They don't trust like the education system for their children's education, but they trust NASA. Well, why would for science and space? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they are the, <laughs> they are the front men of science. They are the they are the the quintessential white lab coats. Um, NASA, you know, created in in 1958 uh, by the United States military. That's, that's the part that, that slays me. Again, they don't they wear white coats, they wear white suits, they smile for the camera, they don't carry guns. Therefore, they must be a science group. It's like no, they are DOD, Department of Defense, all the way. Um, in fact, they're proprietarily military, meaning they were built on the still burning embers of uh, the Nazi war machine, uh, you know, from Operation Paperclip back in the day, which was tons and tons of this part of war, you, which people don't understand, which is there are assets that are seized after war, you know, physical materials, ships, tanks, planes, all that stuff, but also people, meaning if you are really, really intelligent and an engineer, you are you have a certain dollar value tied to you long-term dollar value tied to you and you can be divvied up like anything else and so the russians took their half of the german scientists we took our half of them as well and cl including Werner von braun who basically was the father of nasa again you know and built it off the 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 nazi v2 program the 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 v2 rocket program which they were launching and firing off into the uk at the end of the war so what was interesting about NASA was be, that when there, there were two big points that, that caught my eye. One, which I talked about in the clues, was in 1959, a year after it was founded, they announced the Van Allen radiation belts. NASA engineer called Van Allen, or sorry, scientist called Van Allen. So oh, there's these really thick, horrible, deadly belts of radiation surrounding the entire world. Uh, no one should ever, ever go through those. And then Kennedy comes out a couple of years later and it's like, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, you know. And it's like, well, okay, then go back to Van Allen. It's like, how are you going to get through it? And he's like, well, we're going to go really fast. And it's like, what? That's your, that's your answer? <laughs> you know, it's 60,000 miles thick. Your best speed is about 17,000 miles an hour. That's multiple hours each way. What are you going to shield it with? Well, we're going to go really, really fast. And the, when, when, so the question I throw at people, you want to know about NASA, I, I go, I can, I can sum it up fairly quick. I go, are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no. Um, if, you, if they're, if they're not, if they are deadly, right, super, super deadly, then um, how did the Americans get, go through round trips to the moon and back, go through them without any shielding whatsoever? And by that, I mean, no gold or lead or a whole bunch of water. Those are the only things that can stop radiation. And nobody got, nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Nobody got cancer. There's still, I think, four of these guys still limping around today, right? And then you say, well, okay, they aren't dangerous. I go, well, no, you can go to the NASA website. And they say they're absolutely dangerous. They've got a wonderful video called Orion Trial by Fire where they say, yeah, we can't test manned capsules through the Van Allen belts because it's super deadly. We don't get, it's like, what are you talking about? You figure you solved this thing perfectly in the 1960s. So what happened? It's like 50, 60 years later, you, 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 you don't know how to get through their Van Allen belts. Um, that, and you know, there's a picture I send because people say, well, you, you saying that Apollo is completely fake. I go, no, everything is fake. Uh, there's two videos that I, I point to people. Um, uh, one's on my channel is a guy, a guy named Mike Helmick, who's no longer with us. Uh, who, who showed, basically broke down the, the CGI effects that were used on the in, inside of the ISS, which is just terrible. But the other stuff, when, when it comes to Apollo, is all the stuff you didn't see. Yeah, there were some pretty, pretty pictures, but the rest of it didn't make any sense from a science standpoint. Um, the most obvious being, uh, if you've only got one light source on the moon, the sun 93 million miles away, then how are the shadows not running parallel? Why are they why are they starting to intersect? Why why does that happen? Or the fact that there's four almost four inches per, of perfect ash along the entire moon's surface. Where the ash came from, I don't know. Or that was that from the craters? Was it a volcano that we didn't know about? Um and something just happened. Can you still hear me? 
Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, I need to share a, a screen a share. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share, okay. share something. Okay, good. Yeah, I just got finish your for thought. a second there because it automatically filled my entire screen with your screen share. It's like, what happened? Um, the other thing that I throw up. Yeah, sorry. Is, go ahead and finish. No, it's okay. Which is uh, uh, there? You know, the the satellite dish they used on on the moon. Uh, there's this wonderful, beautiful VHF transmitter. It's like, yeah, but that's a 1969 transmitter. This runs off a car battery. It's got a range of maybe 50 miles. And how are you, and, and that's Morse code, you know, it, it, back in 1969, you're not transmitting crap. So how are you pumping out 10 frames of color video a second and simultaneously running perfect two-way communications? It's like, oh, we're going to hit that geosynchronous synchronous, uh, capsule that's above us. I go, so you're going after a moving target above you, and that's going to then beam to the earth through the Van Allen belts a quarter million miles away. And what's that <laughs> transmitting with? And no one wants to touch it. Um, no feats of no blast crater underneath the moon or underneath the oh sorry the four inches of perfect ash everywhere right so for, footprints 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 everywhere but no blast crater not a breath of ash moved underneath that engine at all it's like okay um, no feats of strength uh, which is you know if if it's one sixth earth gravity which means 180 pound man would weigh 30 pounds which means that's ridiculous i mean you could do amazing things if you only weighed 30 pounds with your muscle mass and yet nobody tried any feats of strength the vertical leap was barely even 18 inches these guys should have been having a hard time and and plus you were run you were walking in slow motion that's the other thing which is like if you're if you have almost no resistance remember you're in a vacuum on top of it so not only is there no resistance for your arms, but your arms weigh basically nothing. Everything should be in fast motion. But instead, all they did was cu cut the frame rate by, by 50%, and that's what everyone used in, in Hollywood and media. It's like, oh, look, they're on the moon. Why? Because well, they're, they're moving in slow motion. It's like, that, that's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, if you weigh 30 pounds, yeah. you still fall at normal speed. You don't float down to the ground. But no one wants yeah. to touch it. No, anyway, I just, I could go on and on and on. But well, the the, the sorry, moon landing is a big a, the the moon landing itself is a pretty big one, and people often come to that and they're like, yeah, obviously it was faked. It's easy to prove it was faked, but they don't go but any they further and they, they don't ask why was it faked. What, yeah, yeah, of course. And well, I, why, you know, why why would I did you I did it. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Uh, well, I did a quick screen share. I wanted to mention, like, everybody's seen the NASA logo of the of the red, you know, forked thing going through a flat circle. Right. Is it, you know, if, if you really, if you were to zoom out or you look up like serpent NASA logo, there's a bunch of these examples out there. And it's a serpent's tongue. That's what their logo is. It's a serpent's tongue speaking through a flat disc, which I thought was really interesting. And like you said, like, everything is a lie. But like the symbolism is how they communicate between themselves. And that's where you find a lot of the truth. Like if it's a serpent's tongue speaking through a flat disc, that tells you exactly what NASA is. It was built to convince us the world is a globe when they know better. And I want to bring that back to, this is a post from the Serapium here about Freemasons and basically how they're Satanists. But this is a quote from a Freemason named A.E. Waite. And, and their reference here is the Tower of Babel after God babbled languages and split the languages, right? Right. Because there was a one world government. They tried to wage war against God and God's just like, nope, everybody started talking different languages. Um, and that's where we get so many historical like mix ups with so many different supposed gods. They're the same thing and they have just different names. Yeah. But he's basically saying right here, out of evil comes good. However, their version of evil, you know, yeah. from God doing this to them. And the confusion of tongues gave rise to the ancient practice of Masons conversing without the use of speech. And that's, you know, right down below that, I have an example of like the Beast of Revelations right outside of the UN headquarters right. or the NASA logo or, or the like uh, Google Chrome logo. Or so many of these symbols are where you find the truth of what they really are. Oh, yeah. And I just wanted to point that out about NASA while, while we're talking about it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But go ahead to... Uh, yeah, it's funny you mentioned, by the way, that that people will say, oh, we, and, and yes, people have questioned the moon, uh, the Apollo program since Apollo finished in 1972. Uh, it, but the problem was that is that the Internet wouldn't fire up for another 25 years and social media, not until much 
much later. So people, their only outlet was they used to go to like UFO conventions and bring NASA photos, you know, and say, look, it doesn't make sense, you know, because all it does is, and these weren't conspiracy people, these were just nerds that were looking through us going, this, this photo doesn't line up. There's nothing, there's something wrong here. And so, but I've had people that say, okay, the Apollo program is, is wrong, right? Because that predates flat earth by a long, long way. Uh, but the, you can't tell me the ISS is wrong. I mean, I've had people legitimately tell me that. It's like, okay, fine. They're faking the moon, but they're not faking the ISS. I'm going, what? Do you know nothing about crime? It's like, if, if you're faking one thing, you're faking it all. Because there's, you, you wouldn't, you, if you're going to get caught with one, you're going to get caught with everything. And the punishment is same, no matter, no matter what you do. So you're going to fake every, absolutely everything. Why would you make anything real? If people believe one thing, they're going to believe everything you, yeah. you throw at them because and now some is going to have better production value than others. Um, we went through an entire decade of NASA, you know, the, the early space shuttle era with um, footage that was grainy. It wasn't HD that apparently no one was even paying attention. Remember, there wasn't there wasn't any Internet in the 80s. So it, you may have got it may have got caught the live broadcast. You almost never caught the rerun unless you showed it on VHS. And who are you going to share it with anyway? But they were wearing motorcycle helmets short sleeve shirts and no gloves whatsoever there was no pressurized suit in fact the motorcycle helmet you could, <laughs> you could see their neck underneath it it's like so wow. why not just wear a bike helmet and because i thought the motorcycle helmets that were posing with like for challenger and stuff was um just for display purposes no those were the actual helmets they were using in in that and that was the entire 80s they went through the, all those and nobody even questioned a suit a, a, a thing it wasn't until the internet, high-speed internet came out and people started comparing notes that NASA all of a sudden started falling apart, which is anyone that gets into, you know, the flat earth topic, they want to lean on NASA. Yeah. I did too. It's like, the, the, you know, sorry, let me throw one more thing out at you because we can't go on this forever, which is the, the blue marble shot, which I love bringing up, which is we went from Apollo 8 through Apollo 17 and no one took a full disc of the pic of picture of the earth until the very last mission on the way home Apollo 17 which is in 1972 and then I throw it out him. I go you know when the next blue and it was called the blue marble and you, you'll know when you see it because it shows <coughs> the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica which is really convenient it's like why not take a picture of the United States but whatever so the next picture that was ever taken, the next, the second blue marble shot wasn't taken for 43 years. And that is a huge amount of time in the space industry. That's all, most of the seventies, all of the eighties, all of the nineties, 2000 to 2010, halfway to 2020, 2015 was the second blue marble shot. And it's absolutely positively a fact. Obama tweeted it. Scott Kelly wrote the press release, apparently from space. And it's, it's like, and it's, and it was a crappy shot. And the reason why they had to eventually run the uh, the second blue marble shot is because the iPhones were first coming out. And if you remember this, uh, the first iPhone, they had to create, they wanted to say, well, let's make a globe background for the very first iPhone. And they didn't have one. So they had to get a NASA engineer. Uh, um, oh, what was his name? Robert Simmons. And the, the famous quote, well, it is Photoshop because it has to be because he had to create it from, from scratch with layers. And what got me, sorry, I'll end with this. What got me was when I went to the Kennedy Space Center, I saw that image. I saw that Robert Simmons iPhone image. It was blown up on a display outside in their special space shuttle on top of the 747 thing, right? And I was showing, I was there because I was with the documentary team for the Netflix documentary. And I showed it to him. I'm going, look, this is the shot. It's absolutely Photoshopped, right? In fact, you can even see the cloning tools down here in the, in the Southern Hemisphere. It's right there. The, the Netflix team was having none of it. They did not want to talk about that at <laughs> all. And it's like, look, this is just what NASA does. I mean, they, they, it is a complete sham theater from beginning to end. And because most people weren't paying attention, because most people don't care about space, come on, it's mostly the math club and the physics club and those guys, they, they just kind of glossed it over. No one paid attention until recently, until we got involved. Until we started, you know, our community got involved and, and started saying, look at this, look at this, look at this. And we started comparing notes. you basically using their own tools against them, you know, high-speed internet and, and yeah. very, very powerful computers that you can be like, oh, yeah, by the way, we broke it down. And here's fun little videos that you can watch. You don't even have to think. Just watch the movie. So, anyway. um, so I, I know we're running out of time here, and I want to be respectful for your time. But I'm going to share something here. It, 
this is our map post at the serapium.com slash map. And it's basically, I'm trying to connect all the different dots for people. And I've got a part about like biblical earth and geocentricity and, and young earth Neat. sort of because they go together and the firmament and stuff. And, and I'm trying to make it neater, but I'm going to sort of zoom in over here about NASA. And this is the most interesting thing I've found about NASA. And it's in relation to everything going on in Antarctica. It's the timing. Right. It was three years after the 1955 Operation Deep Freeze where they discovered the firmament. Right. So that I think that NASA was essentially founded completely to hide the firmament, to completely hide the shape of the Earth, basically oh, yeah. as a sort of a globe a globe psyop yeah. firm. Rob Rob Skiba was one of the first ones to to jump on that when I was when I was talking about it in the clues, um, which was, and in fact, in his presentation, he said, "Yeah, he goes, look what happened in 1959." He goes, the Van Allen radiation belts were announced and simultaneously the Antarctic Treaty was put into place at the same time. And, yeah. and it was one of my arguments, which is like, look, if I wanted to hide the world, hide it from the people, there's certain things you'd want to do. And look what they did in 1959. They, they hid the, the outer edge, secured the outer edge and the upper edge simultaneously. Unless you believe in coincidences, yeah. that doesn't happen. They did. That, that's what I would have done. Yeah. And they started running, you know, psyops, uh, you know, PR for globe theory, basically, yeah. with NASA. And I've got that image there, by the way, for people that you know are asking about the uh, the serpent symbol of NASA. You can oh, yeah. see it right there. I'll zoom in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the serpent's tongue speaking through a flat disc. How much more obvious could it get? Except that they're all sort of the same thing. They're all a triangle going through a circle. So they're all basically a serpent's forked tongue going through a flat disc. All of the different space programs yeah. symbols. It's all the same thing, you know, yep. I, and that's I don't very think, telling. Did you include, you know, one I think you might have missed there, or maybe you didn't. I was, I'm the. What is that, it, please? The, yeah, uh, is the Star Trek logo? The Star oh, Trek logo. <laughs> that's Trek logo great. Looks a lot like the uh, the blue logo in the middle of that, uh, of the NASA thing, uh, which is you know. The, yeah, it does. And, I remember. And, and by the way, the Star Trek logo not coincidentally is almost was almost ripped off entirely i think paramount probably got some money from this by space force the the mythical fifth <laughs> branch of the military that uh that doesn't do anything it's like space force whatever although if you want if you believe in the alien agenda if aliens did show up or even said they showed up space force would be there to greet them which i think is a running joke because yeah I mean, I, I, I don't think Space Force, it, I think it's really only exists on paper. And it's more of a, uh, a facade than anything. It's just a veneer because they said, look, that all the other branches, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine and, and Coast Guard, they have recruiting issues constantly. And you're going to bring in Space Force. Yeah, the, the cool kids military. It's like that's the no one. No one would go yeah. for that if it was actually serious. It's Star Trek. Yeah, it's, it's Star Trek. It's, or, or, it's what the, it is. It's Star space, Trek. Or the Space or, Marines from Aliens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Starship Troopers. Um, real back. fast. Real, I want to give you sort of a, a quick tour because we were talking about the topics of Big Bang and uh, you know how they're trying to hide God. Yeah. Uh, I've got a section on that here on the map. Basically, it connects a couple of these dots. If you've got any improvement suggestions, let me know. Mm -hmm. But the multiverse, uh, the Big Bang theory, globalism itself yeah, right. is a joke. But you know, globalism, uh, space. I mean, these are these are parts of of the false sciences that they've built over here, like evolution, uh, mitochondrial Eve, carbon dating, panspermia. Um, I call it commoners core, but co even common core things like the education system, it all sort of goes back together uh, to this sort of attempt to hide God from us, monopolize knowledge. Um, I think it, it, it's, I think it goes beyond just trying to hide the shape to a sort of a religious war. I think that it really is a secret society thing versus humanity. Yeah. What do you think? I do. I do. Uh, at the highest levels. Yes. The, the question is, in fact, I, I can't name just one society, so I either call them the, the world order or I call them the authority. One of the two, um, these are sure. the people that you don't get to find out their actual names. You might be able to find some groups that some of these guys talk to, but you're never going to know exactly who they are because, again, the first rule of power, uh, you, you don't get to, you know, these are the people that money means nothing. And, we're, and people, you know, I, I, I don't want to end on a, on a weird note. But people, you know, talk about Bezos and, and Gates and Elon Musk and all of that. It's like those guys are just, yeah. they are just paper mache 
window dressing. I go, don't forget, I go, Bill Gates is new money. I mean, we've heard of old money and new money. He is like the newest of money. And that's it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Does he have billions of dollars? Sure. Everyone has Microsoft products. Does this mean he could do a sit down with some of the, you know, some of the world order on a regular basis? No, <laughs> no, he's not. His lineage doesn't go, go, go that far back, or at least it's, uh, I don't think so to where, you know, he wouldn't sit on any sort of weird council. He's just, he's, he's out in front so that people can point at him and say, oh, yeah, he's the evil guy. Bezos is the evil guy. And if I have to hear one more story about someone yeah. saying that, that Jeff Bezos is going to save us. I'm sorry, not Jeff Bezos, uh, Elon Musk. Elon is going to save us. It's like, yeah. come on. This is the guy that's been faking space for years. And it's like, just because he said, oh, I'm going to buy Twitter and remove censorship. He's now Elon Christ really no he's he's nasa 2.0 without foia and i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of expose him in my report tonight at nemos news network oh yeah um, please do I've, I mean, got, he's, I've got a lot to say about his past quotes oh yeah he is a total total complete and total puppet fraud that is all he is yeah. uh and, and i will say this the the media and whatever think tank decided to run with him it worked out pretty good it, this is a guy that mark zuckerberg should have been but Zuckerberg has the the personality of, I don't know, wheat bread of an eel. Yeah, yeah, of, of, a, of an oven rat. <laughs> Oldie bread, yeah. Yeah, the the man does does not have a person. I mean, he looks like he's a deer in the headlights at all times, literally at all times. But but you get seriously. I th I think I, I think the best case for lizard people. I mean, I don't believe in that, there but I go. think the best case for lizard people is Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, Zuckerberg. Yeah, he he does. He he does. He looks like a freaking gecko or a nude or something. But but they're trying to pump up Elon to be. I'm not kidding you when I say this, and I don't think it's a coincidence. It's like some sort of version of Tony Stark, and it's like he's not that guy. <laughs> He, he wasn't. No, he's I mean, not. Tony Stark was a lot of things, and it was all fictional because the real Tony Stark could have never ever done even a fraction of what he accomplished. Right? This is a guy that you yeah. know made made suits in an afternoon. It's like really <laughs> with what I could I could have a thousand man engineering team work on that for a month. I'd never be able to come up with a suit like that. But yeah, but but he they've got Elon again. He was he was just a every time he says something is just well you'll you'll cover it is just outlandish and ridiculous. And I noticed right away, I mean, I made videos back in 2017 about this guy and saying, look, this guy, you've got to stop talking to him. But because he's a billionaire and so many people worship money, whatever he says, he doesn't even have to wear the lab coat. He, he just, you know, they, they just push him off like he's channeling the spirit of Nikola Tesla himself. And, and if the world continued 10 years from now, they'd be like, oh, yeah, he absolutely created PayPal and Tesla and Twitter and all these things. It's like, no, no. Oh, sorry, I, I get worked up when I talk. No, about uh, most of his inventions are like bombs with wheels, and if you saw Cybertruck, you you understand his his capacity for creation. I wouldn't trust anything that flies that or drives that he created or had a part in. Doesn't invent anything. Show me him on a sketchbook any at any time yeah. drawing up something. He is merely a guy that, that opportunist, I will say that, where, you know, like when he got into to, um, Tesla or the PayPal, when he rewrites the corporate charter to say that, oh, yeah, by the way, I, I, I'm the core founder of PayPal. It's like, no, you weren't. You, you didn't even come up with the name. There were other companies. That were the same thing with Tesla. Tesla, like I try to remind people, I go, look, um, uh, Ray Kroc did not invent McDonald's. Uh, Mark Cuban did not invent uh, the, the Dallas Mavericks and so on and so on. There's corporate things that happen over the years where people that, that the survivors of whatever corporation that is, yes, they will make themselves to be up bigger than they are. Or, or hell, Steve Jobs, even, even a better example. Steve Jobs, yeah, he created Apple, but not a lot of the things in it. It was mostly Steve Wozniak. He was the big engineer that built the whole thing. Steve Jobs yeah. is just the front man. But, it, but when he died at yeah. the end, you would have swore that he was a religious figure that, that had just passed away. I was like, whatever. I'm, and I'm not equating Elon to well, Steve Jobs by any stretch. Sorry. Gotta make no, it. no. I mean, his his products worked, at least. Yes. So, you know, we have to be cautious with, with front men like Elon. I mean, that's why he has so much time to go play drama on social media, because he's not running a real company. No. But uh, in the, no. at the end, um, I, I want to... Uh, Briefly, I want to mention that since we're banned on PayPal and pretty much everywhere else, uh, for those who are watching, 
Yeah, yeah we are 100% listener funded. So if you want to support us, you can do so at nemosnewsnetwork.com slash sponsors. But uh, Mark, I, I want to let people know where they can find all of your work. And um, I appreciate you coming on, making the time. Oh, Hopefully yeah. we can do this again. Uh, I think this was really productive and, and informative. We, we, we didn't even really go as heavily as we should have or could have into like the globe research, like the actual like debunking the globe, uh, there, confirming there are, the flat. There are so but we went many, in everything else. There are so <laughs> many different places you could go. I mean, I, I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours. Uh, you know, doing doing the Flat Earth Globe stuff. If you want to look, there's so many people that have made content other than my own. If you want to my, find my stuff, just just type in into Google Flat Earth Mark. You'll find me. I'm 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 not hard to find. Uh, you know, a couple books on Amazon, the Netflix documentary, which isn't even on Netflix anymore. I think it's on Amazon and iTunes and stuff like that. Um, but my YouTube channel, you go to, go to YouTube and type in Flat Earth Mark. You'll find my channel. There's great stuff if you're brand new to it. There's a, there's a list out there made by a bunch of creators uh, called the Flatter's Shortlist for New People. And uh, we do, you know, I do podcasts every Tuesday. In fact, I'm doing a podcast tonight called Strange World. And uh, I do it every Tuesday. I've been doing it for seven years. And I just, there's just so many people out there that do great, great content. Uh, you know, and, and if you're looking to, you know, just do a bunch of Q&As, pick up the, there's a Flat Earth app out there, the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Uh, our people spend a lot of time making that thing and it's, and it's yeah. brilliant. So check it out. Yeah. I got that app after I interviewed flat earth, Dave, and I'm a, uh, I'm a fan. I'm still learning how it works. <laughs> I, I want to like do the group meetups and meet all the other, like really intelligent flat earthers who are brave enough to come out and admit it. Yeah. But, um, you know, let me ask this in closing, um, how bad has it been? Like the, the, the criticism, the, the maybe censorship, if you've had that, um, the blowback, um, any sort of attacks that, that you've had from personally pioneering this research? For me, not as much. I mean, this, this, there's stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, there's stuff you expect to, to get, uh, you know, the, but, I, but peer pressure never really meant much to me. 90% um, of our members are in the closet for a very good reason, <laughs> because they're, they're worried about the blowback from friends and family and most often coworkers. Friends and family, you can sort of deal with, but coworkers, you got to go to work every day. You're going you're gonna to be that guy. You're going to be that conspiracy person, that truth or person. Um, but it hasn't been so bad for me. I, I've been lucky in that, but, but I try to go about it um, methodically in that I can't criticize people that are giving me grief because I used to be them. Everybody, let me end with this. Everybody hates flat earth to start with. Everybody hates it, including me. It's just, and the longer you stare at it, the worse it gets because eventually you're going to realize that when you were net leaning on NASA and science and all the other stuff, you realize there's not a lot there to reinforce it. And what happened to me was, you know, I, I eventually the, the scales tipped and I said, you know what? I'm in a flat earth. So when somebody comes at me and, and gives me a hard time <clears throat> and they wonder why I'm not getting mad at them, it's like, how can I? I, I was you years ago and now I'm not. So it's just a question of when you're going to, when you're going to come around, maybe you will, maybe you won't, but no, the, the blowback didn't, um, didn't really affect me that much. Uh, I, I lucked out. So, and, and I don't get, I don't have Very to do cool. as, I don't have to do as, as uh, hardcore interviews as David Weiss does. <laughs> David David solicits places that that <laughs> yeah. almost always will go in hostile to start. And Dave Dave also has yeah. a really aggressive approach where he's hitting you with a lot of video material right off the bat and it is really I mean you know people get put on their heels and they don't know what to do and so they'll they'll fight yeah. back at them. I I rarely have people fight me. So I have, I have, I respect both approaches. I think there's a, a more of a win for the Socratic method by asking questions, but I like the debate approach. I'll be honest, because, you know, at least you're ready to crush opposition when they start trying to ridicule the truth. And I, I've always been a respecter of debating, um, you know, to, to resolve controversy. So I like both approaches really. I think I'm glad that you guys are both out there doing it in, in different styles. Um, I, I want to mention again, in closing that, there's a bigger con, uh, concept and, and topic here at play than just the shape of the planet. That's not really why we're talking about the shape of the planet. That's an exciting thing. It's interesting. And it, it certainly opens up a lot of possibilities. But yeah. the most important thing, I think, is, is that it, it proves the creation uh, theory versus the Big Bang theory. It proves that there's a creator. 
it proves kind of what science is figuring out now at, at the quantum mechanics level. And they're trying to look for any other reason uh, than the creator that there's an infinite complexity coming out of a, a, a nothingness at a continual loop. Like, like something is weaving reality in real time and they can't figure it out except a creator. Right. So they're giving us multiverse. They're giving us, you know, all of these different panspermia theories and stuff. Yeah. So I, I want to prepare people for that. I, you know, like I said earlier, I was an anti-Christian, anti all theism, uh, anti-theist before, but now I'm like a devout fundamentalist Christian apologist. I mean, I've just completely com converted because I've realized um, not just the shape, but also like what the deep state believes. So I hope people found this to be a value. I, I, I do. And I hope that you'll share it with others. Definitely check out Mark's content. And Mark, thank you again for your time. Oh, yeah. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, folks. We'll see you guys on the next one. NemosNewsNetwork.com.